go. Okay, what we see here is a pile of crap. Now, what is this pile of crap? Well, everybody's doing a let's play, so decided, how about I do a let's make? So, what we have here is we have black denim. We have the white denim of the exact same type, but dyed purple. We've got some one-inch webbing. We've got some two-inch webbing. We also have needles, pencils, pen, measuring tape, some cardboard paper. Now, you may be asking what we're making. <coughs> oh, excuse me. What we're making is making a straight jacket. Figure I might as well just make a video and let everybody know how I make I make them. So, first thing you need usually measuring tape, measuring stick, something with numbers on it, a marker. This is a Prismacolor marker, and you can pick these up for like three, four bucks. Uh, permanent marker would work just as well. Uh, this is for actually marking on our paper back here. You do not want to do anything with the fabric because this will not wash off the fabric. At least I can't get it to. For the fabric marking, what we have is these are actually Conte pencils. We have black and we have white. They're about two, three dollars at an art store. These are made by. Uh, it doesn't say. It says Conte et Paris on here. So, I guess they're from Paris. They're black and white. These are similar to chalk pencils, similar to chalk lines, wh whatever you want to do. But these will uh, these will wash off. And now, since we're going to be sewing through quite a few thick straps and a bunch of denim, we've got needles. I've got two different types right here. I just bought buy these to keep it keep everything good. These are leather needles and denim needles. Now, these needles have a chiseled tip on them that actually push through the fabric and push the fabric aside or slice right through it if it's right in the way enough. So what we do is every time the needle goes down, it'll go through there. Now, usually for a straight jacket, what you want to do is, for measurements, we'll get into that a bit later, but usually want to have about four yards of your body fabric, which will be your body, your chest, your sleeves. And then if you do any colors or marking, like the commissioner has, you might want to get two yards of an additional fabric you want to use for that, because you're not going to be making too much for those. <coughs> this I purchased at a local fabric store in one inch. It was a natural cotton web. I dyed it along with fabric. It's about two to yard. And I'll show you where to do, actually where to put this later. So, got that aside, got the side, pulls back here, giant maze of straps. Eventually I'll give you the calculations on how much strapping you need to have to do a classic posse jacket. But, first thing you want to do with everything is... Everybody always asks, what's the pattern for a straight jacket? Well, really can't say that there's a pattern, but I can show you how I make mine. This right here, it's just construction paper. You can buy at Home Depot uh, catch paper, mat paper, they might call it something. It's basically a giant roll of cardboard paper about paper bag material like you could find at your grocers. So. With that all aside, let us start the process. Now this is how you make your pattern. You get a big flat area, table, a bed. We don't have a table in here, so I'm using a bed. And it's going to be, I think I can draw the right angle like this. So, for paper, we use our Prismacolor. Because that writes on here nice and well. You can see it. Now, uh, if, this is when, if I'm using Windows Movie Maker, probably what you'll see right now is you'll see a picture popped up of, <coughs> of a measurement sheet. And on this measurement sheet, these are all the measurements you need to take. 
They've got measurements to go around. They've got measurements to just me measure from your neck down to your crotch, all that fun stuff. So let me grab my Yahoo Mail and my measurement sheet, and we can begin. Now, the way I do jackets is usually what happens is people do them. They do it out of four panels. And I'll show you the drawing. So here's how people usually do them. You have your front section, which looks like your t-shirt. You got a little net cut out, and they just make it out of four pieces, draw a line straight down. Now, if you buy too little fabric or you really want to squeeze your pattern in there, you can do that. That's fine. But I find just for actual strength of the jacket, if you just take and make this whole front piece, one piece itself, you don't need to do sewing down the center. And then you don't need to worry when you're putting your straps across to run over a seam, which if you have a really weak machine, it's not going to really go over that well. But the rear definitely has to have a flap in the back because that's how you get in. <coughs> so, now you've noticed right here the center line for this is here. The center line for this is offset. Well, what happens is back in here, you make one side longer. It really doesn't matter which side. But what you'll do is you'll make one side longer than the other. So this piece comes over to hit this dotted line. This piece comes over and overlaps by a couple inches. Now that actually closes up the back of it because it's not like a shirt. You don't have buttons because buttons are weak. What you do is you overlap it so that it actually covers the entire upper torso. Now that I've gabbled on enough, let's make our pattern. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this to work, but the measurement sheet that I showed you earlier <coughs> has measurements around. And the torso, what we have for a torso measurement comes out to be, for the upper torso, Got manly chiseled pecs. Might be able to sharpen the knife on those. Jesus Christ. So his measurements are let's see, six, seven, eight on the paper. And it would be 47, 48, and 42. So, you can see this, we've got 47, uh, looks like a 2, just make my 7s a little bit weird, 47, 48, and 42. So, the biggest size we have right here is 48. Now, that is all the way around, and he told me that he had done it tight, so we're measuring that extreme. So, what we're going to say is, we're going to say 50, just to give him a little more breathing room. This is not seam allowance, though. So, we're going to say 50 inches. Now, because of how we can make the jacket, we can make just all of these 50. Because if you remember, on our back, when you put the straps on the back, this closes like a coat. You could pull it over further this way. You could let it go looser that way. The back is open, and it's got adjustable straps on there. So you can do that, so that anybody within probably a 10-inch range could fit this. So anywhere between a 40-inch chest and a 50-inch chest would fit this rather well, which covers a large array of sizes. Straight jackets usually come in different sizes themselves. They've got a bunch. <coughs> Excuse me. My nose is running down my throat. they got a bunch of different sizes to begin with if you order from Posse or if you get them custom made. They're made to fit you, but they will fit someone else in a certain circumstance who's relatively close to your measurements because of the back being able to adjust left or right, loose or tight. So, one last measurement we need for this is Blow 
other thing? Oh, those are experience or. See, so we've got chest. So from here to here is 22. So from his chest down to his waistline is 22 inches. And there's another measurement, too, for the total length of the jacket down to the crotch, but it's not going to go. So number 9 happens to be 33 inches. And that measurement is for the neck. So 33 inches and 22 inches. And what we could do from here is we already have, we're already estimated, we're going to say 50 in my little chicken scratch. 50 inches square this way, all the way around. <coughs> and 22 inches down to the waist, 33 inches total. So we can go ahead and safely assume that it's about 28 inches. Now, when you measure the measure for yours, you might want to measure from your neck all the way down to usually where your pants sit. That'll give you a more accurate measurement. But we're doing the video now, and he won't get back to me. So let us do this. And now, because we're being going to make two pieces of the fabric, what we need to do is say, okay, 50 inches in half is 25. So if you look and think about a straight jacket as a two-dimensional object being flat, this is the front neck hole, 25 inches for the front piece and 25 inches for the back piece. That will give us 50 inches. So for the front piece, we'll start off. Start off and measure a line. That is 25 inches. Now you can use the edge of the paper if you want as a nice straight guide. Okay, <coughs> so 25 inches, and we go over and make our mark. Now, like, this is the first time that there's actually been a enemy that's one shot. Okay, stupid. <coughs> oh, my nose. And now we have a piece of paper that's marked with a 25 inch line. 25 inches from here to here. That's the front half. Now, for the front half, we've estimated about 28 inches in total for the waist area up to the neck. So now we want to go down the paper and measure out 28 inches. And measure in three different places from your line so that that way you can get them square. Now, probably help if I had a straight edge. We can straighten that out later with the paper. So, 28 inches down, 25, just to right here. So, we've successfully drawn a square on a piece of paper. So, we have 20 inches from this line to this line, and 25 inches from the edge of the paper all the way up to over here. Now, in order to get this straighter, you can use this 25, mark up there, and you can make your mark across. Now, says his neck is about 18 inches. Okay, what we're
we're going to want to do for this is find our center. So 25 would roughly translate to what, 22 and a half, or sorry, 12 and a half inches. So we mark off 12 and a half inches as our center. Double check, make sure that 12 and a half equals 25, and it does. 12 and a half is our center. So now that we have our center, what we could do is with an 18 inch neck, and this is why I recommend using a flexible measuring tape because you can do this with it and it won't destroy it. 18 inches for the neck. And usually what I try and do is make a perfect circle holding your tape like this at 18 inches. Make a little circle oval it out a bit there place marks to the left and right of it so we have about three inches on that side and we could just mark three inches on this side now this is our top and this is our bottom so now that we have our neck marking with this being our center we usually want to make it curve just a little bit you could also take a piece of string and hold it out like right here attach your marker to it and that'll give you a nice curved line but we can always fix this later so and also if you've ever seen anybody We've drawn our straight line here and here. That's not really going to cut it. So, because nobody's shoulders happen to look like this. They always usually yeah. slope down unless you built like a brick shit house. So, you can take and make a little bit of a slope there. And if you measure, you can do this all by an eye or not one and a half look over on this side do it all by eye Just make sure it's actually a little bit low Let's go like this and we'll scratch out that line so now we have the front you can also make the neck as wide as you want or as narrow as you want with the neck you can always cut you can always cut more but it's going to be very hard to add on to it if you wind up screwing up so let's do our outline so now we've used our measurements with an average for the front We've taken it and 25 inches because that is half of 50 and he's 50 inches all the way around average. From neck to cro neck to waist slash crotch area, you can also adjust this up and down. Just make sure if you leave a little bit of extra fabric down here past your bottom line. So, originally we had 28. With the neck curve, from the neck curve, we have it's 27, so it's about an inch down from our original pattern and where we want our neckline. Now we have the front piece done and measured out. Now what we can do is, and what's really good with this is once you get this right and done, you don't have to measure out for the next piece. You just take this, roll out some more, pull it down, and just sit there with a marker and say this say this piece right here is represented by this piece now you can take your marker flip it on a new piece and just go trace around it and say oh hey trace around your piece of paper and you'll wind up with this exact size on a new piece of paper so you have two copies two and with your back one what you can do is Find the center line again. Usually when you transfer this over to a new piece, you can mark it. 
mark it, find the center line, and then just go over a little bit, and you have your overlap on the back. Now, he wants a design on here, so what I'm going to do is, this is extra for a design, we're going to measure out two inches from center, two inches from center, for a total of four. So we have a four inch, and this is not going to be the ending design. I'm just working the design out on here. I just want to get as much of this on video as possible. So we're going to hold this here. We're going to hold this here on our center line. What does that not, not look like our center line? So, mark it down. And he wants a Y design in the front. So, just marking off where I think the arms are going to wind up being. Weighting this down. Center line. And we've got 13. And with measurements like this is great so you can check from here to here we have four and a half we got four and a half from here to here this design is going to be a Y design on here now two inches out two inches out two inches out The, it's probably going to wind up being about three and a half inches wide. This strap design. Because we have seam allowances too. So. Strap design here. And. You do two inches out on our line here. And where these lines intersect, you can finish our design. Two inch intersect. Now this is completely uh, secondary. You don't need to do this. I'm just doing this because it's the design the commissioner wants. And you could make up any design you want in your head. Use your paper without tearing into any fabric and you can get your design just great so bam all this is going to be purple so while we've got this we're approaching 23 minutes right now let's try and make this half hour Another thing you'll need is platinum scissors. Sorry, titanium. Titanium scissors are not made out of titanium. They're just the edges are lined with titanium. But I've cut so many fursuits and fabric with this that they are almost dull right now. They'll do the job, but... Now, you may be sitting back wondering, well, where, where are the armholes? Well, a lot of times, t-shirts are cut so that the arms come out, come into the t-shirt a bit like this. And they'll actually cut into the design. I'll show you a better angle. Listen. Now, if we want, we can take our design to make it perfectly square. Since we already have a straight edge right here. Since we already have a straight edge on our design right here. We're going to take this, fold this over, and match it up and see. Usually you put corner to corner. And uh, I don't know if you can see this, but we have a little bit of overlap right here. 
We can cut that off. It's really not going to matter, but let's pull this inside out and cut to make our neckline uniform. As you can see, our center line. Center line is fairly close, just a little bit off. But the important part is your corners match up. And let us cut our neck. We'll be cutting both sides of this right now so that it's uniform across here. Now, you can also do a little bit of trimming here since that. wound up to be uneven. Let's cut down the side. Just a little bit. And don't worry too much if you're cutting off too much because when we go on the fabric, because when you remember when you sew, when you sew, you have two pieces of fabric you put together, and you sew down a line. Which, when you sew down the line, makes a seam, but it also makes the fabric a bit shorter. So we have to add in a seam allowance. Um, once we get to the sewing, I'll show you that. Now let's just finish this up. I'm cutting our bottom piece square to the paper, not necessarily square in the sense of its complete 90 degree angle. Okay, we have our front piece right now, and just because I've got three minutes left in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the back piece. You'll wind up wasting a lot of this paper. It's nine dollars for a giant roll of this, so don't feel too bad if you waste a bunch of it. Oh, another thing you want to have too is weights pennies, an ashtray, uh, a severed limb, something like that. I'm using an ashtray from Dave & Buster's. And because the fabric likes to roll up, you can just roll it flat or whatever you want to do. Now, let's pull this up for a closer view. Now you see what we've done here. We have our front piece. We've squared all the edges up. Let's make the back piece. No measuring needed because we've used half of our measurement and we've measured everything out for the front. <coughs> Let's do this. Let's just go over here to the edge. Now, this neckline is unimportant on the back because if you look at a t-shirt or anything, the front is dipped down but the back itself is not. And that's relatively simple to do. All that matters here is that you get markings on the paper. And we make our halfway marks. Fuck, this marker's running out. Halfway, halfway, boom. You've got your back. Now, because this neck isn't going to do well, it would be confusing on which side of the jacket is which. Usually what you'd want to do with this is, this is our center mark. Usually you want to make, just connect these. Make like a low rising, like the back of a t-shirt. Because if you take a look at a shirt, the front of the shirt is always dipped in. Well, the back of the shirt is not. <coughs> While we have this in paper form, let's take a look at our 18 inches for the neck. Gotten off the measurement sheet. So we have, you can measure this right here like this. We have eight and a half. In the back we have seven and a half. Obviously not enough for our 18 inch neck. So, let's fold our paper in half again, our front piece, and cut it a little bit wider. I'm going to add a half an inch. 
And you can also add in inches. when you start cutting it out with fabric and that's a little bit of an angle so, and if you don't don't want to buy this paper you are probably get a whole bunch of paper bags from your grocery store so just to not confuse ourselves later on and even if you think this is the front you will get confused when you're grabbing fabric and you're cutting fabric we're right on here front. Take your pattern, place the side. Right on here, rear. Now here's our center line. And at this point if you want and you're paranoid about your design, you can completely go bleh. you can completely go and measure everything across. From the neck we've got nine and a half. This side we've got nine and a half. Oh, maybe I should let you see that. Nine and a half. Nine and a half. You can measure it across if you want. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. You can measure it down. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. And remember not to measure from here because we sloped these. Measure from here down. You could also measure from here like this. We have twenty-six. 26. So it looks like our pattern is square. Here's our center line. Now normally what straight jackets do is they overlap in the back. So we're just going to go along here and you could take your measuring tape measure out like this. Say okay two inches of overlap, two inches of overlap just so you get everything square but being an artist does have its merits in the fact that you learn to proportion stuff nearly equally without a measuring tape. Now, at this point, if you want, you could go ahead and cut this and cut this up the back and create your two pieces. But right now, we're just going to leave it like this. <coughs> so, we're at 33 minutes right now. And since we're doing the measuring and pattern making in this episode, I'm just going to go ahead and make it a little bit longer. We're going to do sleeves. Take your pattern and put them somewhere you're not going to forget them. Toss your old paper aside. Get some new paper old. Now, straight jacket sleeves are going to be they're not necessarily too hard to do, but this is where usually people cut people mess up. So, we get our pattern, measuring tape, and sky zores again. Now, an important measurement here is from your armpit to your middle finger. And our commissioner has said, from the bottom of his armpit to the tip of his middle finger, we have 30 inches. So, making the sleeve, going to do 30 inches if we don't tangle up. Our measuring tape. Now, I'm going to use another pair of scissors as a weight. We're going to mark out on our paper 30 inches. 30 inches. One. Weigh it down. And what I'm doing here is I'm weighing this down with something heavy and holding it straight so we can create a self imposed straight edge. Probably not too straight from where you're looking, but if we measure out equally on sides, we'll be good. So, now think about it. You're measuring from 
your armpit to your middle finger. Well, if you create a sleeve like that, you're not going to have anything extra on the end. <coughs> and usually, the straight jackets have sleeves that come off a little bit more so that it can wrap around and out of reach of your hand inside the sleeve. So, another thing, too, is when you do a straight jacket sleeve, you never want to. This is what this good, this extra paper is good for. You can write down your markings on it. So we have the sleeve right here. Now this we'll say this is 31 inches, 30 inches, 31, one inch off. So here's our sleeve right here. Arm goes in here. You got your bicep, your elbow your arm, and your hand. I hate drawing hands. So, this is our sleeve. Now, with the fingers, what you wind up having is, if you sew it just like this, you're not going to have any space. Your arms are going to be cramped in there. But if you also take it and make it two inches longer, when you sew it together and turn it inside out, you're going to have to sew a strap to that. as depicted by the little wiggly coming off. You're going to have to have a strap to that. So what we want to do is we want to double the fabric up. So for extra space in our sleeve, your hand is about, my hand is about eight inches long from the wrist to the middle finger. We've got eight inches. So what we want to do is, and I know the guy's close to my size, we're going to add four inches onto here. Okay, four inches. Kaboom. Now that's not all we want to add. The four inches is just extra space for your hand. We want to add more now because what we're going to have to do when we make the sleeve. Give me a second. I'm crafting an example. When we make the sleeve and attach the strap, we want it to have some strength on it so that you're not pulling on a lot of the fabric or just one portion where it's sewn, we want to pull on the entire arm. So here's our little straight jacket sleeve. And what you want to do is you want to make an area down here where you can take your fabric, fold it up maybe once, maybe twice, so that when you pull on it, you have the entirety of the arm getting pulled instead of just the center. So you want to fold it over a couple times and usually the normal fold for a straight jacket sleeve is about two inches. So we're going to say we're going to fold this over twice. So I'm going to add another four inches to the length of that. Now what we have here is we have our arm measurement from here to here which is the total length of our arm but we need some space so we add four more inches you can add four to five it's not good to add more than that because then when you cross the arms in the back you're gonna wind up getting the ends of the sleeves touching each other we don't want that we want enough so that we can put a strap on there and have the ability to pull the strap tight or loose and then we have our the fold for the jacket. How I showed you with the little Faco sleeve here. You fold it over, we're doing it twice. And since one fold on a regular jacket is normally about two inches, we're gonna fold over twice, so that adds a total of four more inches. So what we have here is we have our we have our 30 inches right here, represented by this number. We have plus four further on. Then we have another plus four. I should probably be working this the other way, but my camera's at such a bad angle right now. So, what we want to do now is use more of the arm measurements. Four and five. 
four, the measurement on the sheet number four is 17 inches. That's around the bicep. So because we're not going to make the sleeve out of two pieces, we're going to make it out of one. We've got 17 inches there. Let me double check. 17 inches. Now we're going to overestimate. We're going to say about 20 because we need a little bit of room inside there. We don't want to make it skin tight. Not with the fabric we're using, it does not stretch. So if we have 20 inches, that's 10 in the center. 20. 20. So now I've made marks right here and right here. This represents 20 inches. And we can do our little neat weight trick again. Neat our weight trick and measure from our markings. Ooh, wiggly line. Okay, so we have a fairly wiggly line right here. This is 20 inches. Let's highlight that for you. Wink. 20. Now, what I'm drawing here is to make it loose. This is not seam allowance. Whenever we do that into the fabric making, I'll get into that more. Now, this wrist is 8 inches. So measure back here, just place your hand here at your maximum measurement at your arm to middle finger, measure to your wrist, and his wrist says it's about eight and a half inches. Now, let me measure mine, eight inches, sorry, let me measure mine, mine's seven and a half, so eight. Now, if you take a look, eight inches, if we fold that out, your hand is barely going to be able to squeeze through there if we just laid it flat. So because we made this 20 inches, let's just go ahead and round this up to 10. So right here we shall have 5 and 10. So this is our wrist. <clears throat> now, there's a proportion between how big the sleeve is, how big the jacket is, to how actually how wide the sleeve at the end is going to be. But we're going to make this simple. We have 10 inches here. Go ahead and since this is going to be one sleeve, when we take it and fold it in half, here's a, here's a measuring tape. We take it and put it on the jacket, we're going to be doing this and sewing it together. So, let's go ahead and make the rest of it five, 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 extend it. Arm thing down, five. Okay, so I have marked out here the rest of the sleeve. Once I draw over this, it will become a lot clearer. But this is our wrist measurement at 5 inches. So I marked out 5 inches on either side here for a total of 10 inches. Let's connect these up so you can see them. Now, your hand is going to sit here. Hand is going to sit right here. The rest of your arm is going to be in here, and we've already added on extra for folding it over. So, let us use our, our drawing technique. 
weigh this down and in order to make the sleeve come in from being big at the top to coming small down at the wrist we want to take put our measuring tape at our line here oh, let me turn this put our measuring tape at the line here and put the measuring tape at the mark here hold down and draw a little line We'll do the exact same for the opposite side. Hold down. And draw a line. Now there's a lot more you can do with this process to make sure that this sleeve will absolutely fit. You can take and measure around your elbow. Say it's 12 inches and then measure from your armpit to your elbow and say it's mine's 11 inches there so from the armpit to the elbow we have 11 inches and it was about 12 inches across so place this at 6 and we could see right here there's 12 there's 12 right there and right there so we do have extra space in our arm you always want to make the sleeves and even the body a little bit bigger than your measurements. So, here's a basic draft for the arm sleeve. And you could pretty this up if you want. With bolder lines, you could also do a lot of other work to it. So, now we have our arm pattern almost done. Now, since we have measured from under the arm we're also not we're not counting for what comes over the top of the shoulder right there so we'll take and from our design we'll go two inches here and we'll make our little arm curve Now this arm curve right here is important because if the arm sat completely square on the body, it would wind up all boxy. What this does is it allows the sleeve to sit naturally lower, the top of it, because what we're going to be doing is when we sew it together on the underside, the seam should be running under the arm, over the hand, and then down. So. I don't need to put a pattern on this. I know where I'm going with the pattern. I'll just cut out a four inch wide piece of my extra fabric and put it on here. So let's get to cutting. I've been thinking about putting a music track behind this, but then I don't know of any music that's about an hour long. Maybe an entire Tool CD, but I'm pretty sure they have that protected. And I don't want to get this video kicked off. So you just have to listen to me and my boring voice talking over this entire thing. You can also do the same thing with the body panels. You can take and fold this over on your center line, but we're not going to pollute it that much. As you can see here, two inch fold, two inch fold. Once this is all put together, it'll look a lot better. But now we have all the major portions of the jacket done. We've got the sleeve. 
then from here, oh. from this point right here where we measured down to this point right here, this is our original. And we've added more on so we can fold it over and sew it for strength. We've also made it a little bit wider because you can always go through and sew these. Sew this when you're sewing it. You can sew it a little bit tighter if you want that. So now we have the arm pattern. We have our back pattern, and we have our front pattern. Now. Ugh. There's really no use in making a pattern for the, sh the strapping because uh, eventually when I get to the next point in the video, we're going to be cutting fabric. And the last thing you want to put on your jacket is the straps. So, because we want to construct the body first. And then we want to put the sleeves on. So what we're going to do is just roll these up for right now. And now we have our plans. Good thing about this is you only waste a little bit of paper. And damn, now you've got uh, a template you could use for your upper torso should you ever need to use it. <coughs> it's a little bit, a bit different from making a fursuit. But if you ever wanted to make a piece of clothing, a jacket, uh, another straight jacket, something like that, you can just literally keep these. And as long as you don't gain 400 pounds and start looking like uh, the Led Zeppelin, you can use these. So this is uh, the ending of the video of our Let's Make. And we now have our patterns for our straight jacket. Next video, we're going to get cutting. And I don't mean emo cutting.